Welcome everyone to the Knitting by the Sea podcast. My name is Lisa. I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry and I welcome you to my home. I live in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston. It's a small harbor town and I live in the old section of town. Uh, my home is actually very, very old. Uh, it's been here since 1750. It was originally a warehouse and then was converted into a, a residence in 1850. So I feel very, very privileged and feel like a caretaker of this special old uh, property here. Um, today we are going to do several things. So we'll talk about some finished objects that I have. We'll talk about some of my works in progress. We will uh, do um, the meet the designer section. I have a winner from the last time and then we have a new designer to meet this time. I'm going to talk about a different segment um, today, um, something something new, and that will just be about my, some of my favorite uh, knitting uh, patterns from the past. And then I'll talk about some new things that I have acquired over the last few weeks, and then we'll have some chatter at the end. I did go to the Knit Local Retreat in Greenwich, New York last weekend, so I have a lot of um, a lot of talk about that and a lot of um, sheepy pictures and videos to share with you at the end. So let's get started. Finished objects. <clears throat> well, I am wearing the very first one. This is the Capri cowl. And this is by my friend, um, Tanya Gammy. And uh, Tanya did this beautiful cowl. It's called, uh, it's called the Kepri. And it is, um, it kind of has a scarab pattern on it. Isn't it just, just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. I love it. Um, so it's a double long cowl. So I've just wrapped it around it. I didn't, um, I didn't block this or anything yet. So it's just, it's just beautiful. And of course it is knit out of, um, out of the uh, beautiful Little Bean uh, Loves Yarn, um, Kayleen from Marblehead. Uh, she's the dyer of this gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. I just love it. Um, I actually, I thought I was going to use two skeins of it. I have two skeins of this, but I actually only used one. So I have another skein left. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one, but I am looking forward to it. I'm really super happy with this. I've been meaning to, um, or I've been waiting to, to knit this for uh, forever. And I just really enjoyed it. I took it along on vacation with me and it was just uh, lovely. It's a charted pattern and it's just beautiful. And so if you should check it out, I'll put the information, all the information for um, everything that I talk about should be below um, on the YouTube video. So you should be able to get links down there as well. But Capri cowl and I am loving it. It's perfect for this time of the year. It'll be perfect for, um, for um, uh, next fall when we get there. Uh, and I'm just, it was a lovely, lovely knit. The, um, the yarn was beautiful. The pattern was perfect. And I'm just so happy, happy, happy with, uh, with this one. Um, the second project I forgot to, I bet this has been done, but I forgot to, I, I think I forgot to show it last time. And this is another cowl. This is the Into the Waves cowl by Ninja Chickens. And this is by yarn that I was, um, I won from, um, Hey Brown Berry. And uh, isn't this gorgeous? Now this is blocked, but I have worn it a few times, so it's starting to roll back in again on the edges. I will, I just kind of need to block this again, but look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I love the yarn colors of it. And this was just a really super fun knit. Um, again, you know, I like to say this knit, you have to kind of be relaxed while you're doing it because you have all these floats. So you don't want to, um, you don't want to pull them too tightly or it won't block out nicely, but um, it's really, it's really lovely. So this is something, you know, where you can practice. This is a great thing to practice before you get really into some, into some intricate color work. You can practice on something like this where you're carrying floats along. So you know what that feels like and you can work out, um, work on your, on your tension, but it is just beautiful. The back looks just fine too but this turned out absolutely gorgeous and I've gotten lots of compliments every time I have um, I have worn this so this is finished object number two and then finished object number three uh, is the second sock in the in the uh, Mary Queen of Socks uh, pattern grouping um, by Pearl Kitty Designs. Uh, if you remember a few times, um, uh, a few podcast episodes back, we had a giveaway for this, um, this sock club. It is a, a year long sock club. And I think there are six patterns in it and this is the second one. So I'm really happy to get this done. You know, I love to knit socks. I'm always knitting socks because I commute to Boston every day. So I have about 20 minutes on the bus and then I have 40 minutes usually on, um, on the T, uh, two different T's, but, um, uh, uh, on the bus, I actually get to, I get to knit. So I really en enjoy that. So I have two done. I have two completed ones and here they are. Isn't this lovely? This, um, the brown yarn is 
fingering weight yarn that I actually used on um, Sophia's Rhinebeck sweater last year. So I have I have a few uh, a few skeins of this, a few balls of this left. So I thought I would pull that out for for socks. And then the blue, um, which I did the the toes, heels, and um, and cuff out of is just some really basic knit knit picks palette, just in a solid in a solid color. And I thought those looked really nice together. I was really happy with um, happy with these. And now that I've shown them, I can wear them. Um, but I really like this um, this this pattern. This was a really simple pattern. Once you you know once you memorize it, it's really easy to, to just keep on uh, keep on going. And uh, it does come up on the top front of the the um, the foot of the sock, and then it goes all the way around um, around uh, on um, on the calf of the. Of the of the sock, but I'm very 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 happy with both of these. Well, all three of these projects, but I'm really happy with um, with uh, with the socks. So yeah, there they are. I have two done. Super happy. Now I can wear them. I do have one other project that's a super secret project, and I can't even tell you what it is or the type of thing that it is. But um, I've been uh, I was a test knitter for um, for someone, <laughs> and I think probably the next time I podcast. Uh, that group of um, knitting patterns, that collection of knitting patterns, should be out. So I shall show you. And I've been holding off on. I haven't worn. Um, I haven't worn this particular thing either, in anticipation of being able to show you. And that's going to be happening very soon. So next time I will have another one that's been done for a little while. But I will get. Um, I will get to show you. So those are my three finished objects. Um, now, I, I, just a, a reminder. I am doing um, hashtag three two one create this year, which has really been very beneficial I think for me a little bit hard sometimes so what that means is that I am only knitting on three projects I'm just I'm keeping myself to three projects plus the bits and bobs uh, blanket because I just pull that out every every now and again but I really only have three projects on the on the needles I can think and dream about other ones but I only have three that I am actively uh, actively working on so um, and that has really made a big difference for me so I'm not doing the make nine but I'm just doing the three two one and I think that has it, it's really, um, it's really been, uh, been, been a help. Um, I don't tend to have, you know, I mean, three is usually my ideal number, but sometimes in the past I've gone a little beyond that and it stresses me out a little bit. Nobody needs to be stressed by their, um, by their knitting. It's just knitting. Uh, so I'm really, um, I'm really trying to keep to that this year. And I think that's been, um, that's actually been very helpful and working well for me. And I think I will continue to do that in the future, unless there's some, I have some <laughs> amazing pile of, of patterns that I just need to, and just need to cast, to cast on. But, um, yes, I'm very, very pleased. Um, very pleased with, with doing that. And it's really, I feel like I'm getting some projects actually completed, um, uh, in a, in a more timely fashion than perhaps that I have done before. Um, and I don't really have to think, I just know I have three, I can choose and grab them, grab and go, depending upon how, how I'm doing it. I'm trying to keep them, you know, one, maybe a little more complicated, one super simple and, um, you know, and another one, a small project for the, the bus, which is usually socks. It's not this time, but we'll show you that in the works in progress. So let's move on to works in progress now. Works in progress. Okay, so as I said, I only have three. So that's really, um, it's really uh, exciting for me. The first one is uh, the Arboreal Sweater, and that is by Jennifer Steingass. I'm really loving this. Uh, you know, I made the NG sweater by her last year, and that is just one of the sweaters that I'm always going to put um, to put on in the morning. I I would wear it every day if um, if I could. Uh, so I really like uh, I like her aesthetic, and I like the shaping of the patterns. Um, they work for me. So, and I'm re I'm really just I just love these Icelandic um, yoke sweaters right, right now. They just are perfect and they're really good. I live, do live in, you know, it gets very cold here in the winter time. So it's perfect um, for me to have something I can just grab and, um, grab and throw on. So I'm really, I'm really happy with this. Um, and, uh, here it is right now. Ha -ha. That's coming out really great. This is the front. So this is a pattern that has, it starts at the top, it's the top down. Um, and it has, does have short rows in the back, which is why you can tell the front. So this, this, the back here, you go back and forth a few times to just create a little more, um, a little more fabric in the back. And that really just, uh, if you didn't do that, you, your neck would, would tend, would kind of, you'd be choking because the back of the, of the sweater would pull down and the, it would, 
it would just kind of it wouldn't look good in the front so you do short rows in the back to give a little more fabric in the back so that, that it, it comes down nicely and it hangs just a little bit differently and that's really what you do it's just a construction technique that really makes it makes a difference in a, in a sweater but you can actually see and then it's easy it's easy to see which is the front and which is the back as well if you don't put a tag in it but so this is my um, this is the this is the sweater I am using Lutalopi for the gray see here and I have it here because I just want to be careful of it so this is the unspun Icelandic I've shown this to you before it's really basically as if you were just taking fiber it's very 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 I it, t tiny tiny s twist on it maybe but it's just very very light it just it just pulls right apart so you do have to be careful, which I've said before. Um, it's actually a nice project because it makes you kind of slow down while you're while you're doing it. You really have to think about it because if you you can't be angry when you're knitting the sweater at all, or be, when you're knitting with Plutalope because the yarn will just split. Now it's super easy to put back together again, especially if you're a spinner. It's just like a little a little spit spit splicing, and it just goes right back together. And you would never be able to tell where the um, where that um, where the split happened. Um, but you know, it's not something that you want to sit and do every time you're doing it. But once you get into a rhythm, it really works perfectly fine. And the fabric, as I've said, the the actual um, the actual yarn is super super fragile. But the actual knitted piece is not whatsoever. You know, there's nothing coming apart there there's nothing it's not going to rip apart or anything like that it's very 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 strong um, you'll notice I have a little marker right here this is just a little dropped stitch that I did I made um, you know I made uh, made up for it I knew that um, I had I had just dropped it before I kept on just kept on going um, so I'll just pull that in later on but um, that's what that's what that is and no one will ever know no one will ever ever know but it's perfectly fine so um, oh I like the way that the pattern actually shows up. It's harder to see in um, like when I'm close up looking at it in real life, but it really looks really nice on on um, on, on screen. So it is um, meant to be kind of like falling leaves, and it looks really beautiful. I'm I'm using the um, the the color portion of it is uh, my hand spun, which I'll show you in a minute. But I decided I um, had that combo spin that I had. Um, that I had done during the year last year and so this is what I decided to use it on. There's uh, color work only on the yoke of this particular sweater. Other ones you might find color work on the sleeves and on the bottom but this one just has the color work at the top which is fine. I like that. So I'm already <clears throat> I'm at the point where I have already split off with from this for the sleeves <clears throat> and I'm working down the I'm working down the body. There is a little bit of, of waist shaping in this and then when you get down to the hips area, it'll come back out again. I saw an interview with um, Jennifer Steingast, I think maybe on Fruity Knitting Podcast, where she said that her later patterns and the patterns that she's doing now, she doesn't really do any waist shaping anymore. And I can see why you don't really need it, but I'm just going to, for this one, I could probably have just gone ahead and knit straight down, but I thought I would do it. It's in the pattern, so I, I kind of like to do the pattern as it, usually as it's written. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try that. Um... I think the other one, the NG had some had some waist and hip shaping as well, and I really I really like this. So this is just beautiful. So I, this, you know, the the Plutalope is is um, it's slightly scratchy because it's you know it's 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 really rustic, beautiful rustic yarn from from Iceland, um, but I think that it will soften up once I wash it. And it really doesn't matter because I wouldn't wear I wouldn't wear this against the skin anyway. I would always wear this over a turtleneck or having a, a t-shirt or something um, underneath it. It's going to be very, very, very warm. Very, very warm. Um, it is just um, amazingly. <laughs> it's amazingly warm. It gets warm when I when I knit on it. And I really I'm I'm kind of I'm glad I'm doing the three two one because. I can already feel it um, if I can see where I would not be able to knit this in the heat and humidity that will be that will eventually be coming. It's certainly not here yet, but it will eventually be coming. So I really want to get this done before I move into that really deep um, uh, and hot and humid weather that we do tend to get here on the East Coast in the uh, in the summertime. But I I literally am. I'm, I mean, I'm just this is just flying along as you can, you know, as you can imagine, because it's just knit round and round and round and round. Um, this is great right now for um, watching um, TV knitting. We've been watching the Hannah mini series on um, on Amazon. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Really good. I highly recommend it. It was it's really really intense and, and interesting. Um, we just finished it last night, so we're very sad. Although we still have 
I think we have, um, I, there's, there's still Game of Thrones is still <laughs> is on t tomorrow night, but, um, we're coming to the end of that too. So when we finished this season of Star Trek and we finished the we finished Hannah and we're, we're going to, we're coming up to the end of Game of Thrones. I got to find up some new shows to, <laughs> to watch now, but anyway, so right now this is perfect for, for TV knitting. I really don't have to think about this cause I'm just like going round and round as long as I'm marking my rows, which I do every time. And again, it's just, it's super pretty. This will be beautiful. I'm sure I'll wear this one of the days at, at Rhinebeck um, as well. So super happy with it. It's really super interesting to work with. If you haven't ever worked with this, you know, the, this is, there's a lot of yarn in these cakes. There's a lot. I don't remember what the yardage is, but it's, it's a lot. I, I think I told you, I, if you remember, I had a little bit left from another project that I had started that wasn't appropriate for Plutolope. And I used that up. I didn't have very much of that, but I used that up in the yoke. And now I'm still, I mean, I probably will finish the body of this sweater with this amount of yarn left. And I may finish the body and get a little bit into the sleeves. And I have two more of these cakes left. So um, so I definitely have another sweater's worth, um, which is which is really fantastic. So I'm very, very pleased. And this is the Arboreal Sweater by Jennifer Steingass. Um, my second work in progress is a new one that I just started reach down and grab it <clears throat> because I finished the socks I actually finished the socks last weekend so I was able to cast on a, another project and uh, my friend Amy Amy Williams um, uh, and she has uh, designed a, a lovely color work hat and she asked me a while ago if I wanted to test it I was like yeah sure send it to me when you you do well I saw Amy this weekend at the Knit local getaway and so she forwarded me forwarded me the um, the hat pattern and it's already been tech edited so now she's just um we're doing some some test knitters or te knitting it for her and then it will be good to go so i'll let you know when that comes um when it comes out but it's really a lot of fun it's super fun so isn't this lovely so it's just it's going to have like these these waves going up the up the top of the hat and coming together in the crown and it is just super beautiful i love it i'm just having a lot of um just having a lot of fun with this. Um, I'm at, this is actually my bus knitting project, if you can imagine. <laughs> I know some people are like, whoa, how can you do that on the bus? But it's really not that bad because the pattern itself is really, um, it's all charted. So, you know, you know me in charts. I love the charts. And it, um, it's the, the pattern, the repeats are on, they're eight, eight stitch repeats. And so you put in markers every time. So you know exactly where you are no matter what, um, especially with just eight, as long as you've got your markers in there, you know exactly where you are in the pattern and it's super pretty. Now, I think this is written for, if I remember, it's got a, you know, it has a regular base color, a background color, and then I think it's written for uh, another two colors to go into it, but you know me, I have to do things a little bit, a little bit differently. And what I am doing is the blue looks familiar because it's the same blue as I used on the, on the, um, on the, Queen Regent socks. So here it is. So it's just, it's Knit Picks, Knit Picks palette. Oops, I got some tangles going on here. Um, so that's the base, the base yarn is Knit Picks palette. And then as is the color. So, but I'm just using, again, this is Knit Picks palette. I forget the colorway of this one, but I, I picked up a couple. They had a, um, they had a sale a couple of weeks ago. I picked up a couple of, of these skeins just because I knew I would end up doing things like this. And um, so, yeah, so all these color changes, I'm not doing them other than changing this, the yarn, you know, the blue to the one other yarn. So I really am doing color work with only two colors. And, but the bang for your buck is amazing because I'm getting all of these crazy different colors. And I tell you, you know, when I finish this and take this out and wear it, people will go, they'll be amazed because they'll be like, if they're not knitters, they'll be like, how, how do you? how did you get all those colors in there? I'm like, oh, whew, it was a lot of work. It was just, it was, you know, you just need to know how to do it. Um, when in reality, uh-uh, super simple. <laughs> I love having those little, those little insider um, tricks going on with your, with your knitting um, where you're doing simple things, but they look super impressive. But I think this is going to be beautiful. It's just been so much fun to do it. It's so much fun to watch all the colors, um, all the colors emerge. And this is going to be a cute little, um, cute little hat. So I look, I will let you know when the, um, when it is available. So again, that is the Skip, uh, Skip C hat by, um, by Amy Williams. And the third project, 
just untangling a little bit here. My third project, as I remember I mentioned to you that I had um, used the my hand spinning, my hand spun on the top of the arboreal sweater. Well, that's, as I said, that's all I'm going to be doing with it on that sweater. And I have a lot left. I have this whole ball here, and I actually have an, another skein in my, uh, in my basket over here by the fireplace. So um, what I thought I would do, this is, this is really a, um, you know, it runs, it's probably, I would say it's probably a worsted weight, but it runs kind of DK to, to worsted. It's super pretty. And so what I thought I would do is just do a simple pair of mitts with it. Um, and then I can wear them with the, I can wear them with that sweater. I probably will have enough to do a hat too, so maybe I'll do a um, just, just do a whole set. <laughs> I'll have this mitts in a in a set. But um, I used to do a lot of these fingerless mitts um, years ago, and then I've just kind of gotten away from it because I have had a lot of pairs, and uh, I've kind of lost them over <laughs> over the last year or so um, through the move. So it's time I need some more. I need some more um, fingerless mitts. So this is just super simple it's just just kind of my own thought up um, pattern because I've been I've done these so much before but um, so this is them or this is this is the first one the start of the first one anyway so this is super simple um, I just I think I cast on uh, 30 stitches around and then I'm just doing a couple of inches of a uh, two by two rib and that's always nice on a mitt because it, it pulls it into your wrist so it's not like flapping around you're not going to get cold and then once I got up to the body of it I just increased so I think I probably have um, what I say 30 yeah I probably I probably increased um, one two three, four, six, I probably increased eight more stitches so Because I need a little, a little bit more width for the hand, but this is how it's gonna, it's gonna turn out. This one I'm not gonna do thumbs on this. I'm basically just gonna leave a hole or a space. So what you do there, and I'll show this probably the next time I'll have I'll have gotten there. So basically, what you do, if you're just doing this, you just knit up to where you want your thumb to begin to kind of stick out of out of the um, out of the mitt, and just stop knitting in the round and just knit back and forth and that creates the opening for for the thumb and then when you're done with the thumb you just pick it back up and start knitting back again in the in the round and then when I'll just knit up here and then I'll put um, I'll put a little um, a little ribbing um, up here by the by the fingertips again as well so that's a really easy way to do it and then you don't have that fiddly thumb going around or you're trying to figure out how to get it and it's I mean, it, it does work. I certainly have done it in the past, but I tend to, I'm like, oh, sometimes I'll do it a little too tight, and then you're, well. Um, so this way, this the thumb just um, the thumb just sticks out, um, and then you can use them for you know while you're typing if you need to use it in your office or something like that. But so it's a really simple way to do it. Again, so here when I get to the thumb portion, I will just stop knitting in the round, and I will just knit back and forth, and I will until I have the space that I want for my thumb opening, and then I'll pick it back up and knit in the round. Um, I obviously will do two of these. But I have plenty, and these go really fast too. Perfect, perfect TV knitting once again. So that is really, I'm really excited about about getting these done um, and using my hand spun. I haven't used hand spun my hand spun in quite a while, so I'm pretty excited about that. And like I said, I have that plus I have a whole other skein too, so I probably have enough to do another project with that as well. I have been continuing on with my spinning, um, and that's one of my other um, goals this year is to actually do some spinning. Uh, my spinning wheel sits right in my living room, so it stares at me. What I have been doing, um, what we've been doing is uh, we kind of get home a little bit. Well, Sophia and I kind of get home a little bit late, so usually I get, don't get home until 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, and she's usually a little bit later than me, and what she's been doing is coming home and um, and exercising at night. She's been trying that um, for a little bit. So basically what, hap what will happen then, um, what has been happening over the last week or so, um, when I come home, I don't have to get like we don't have to get dinner right on the table so we have probably like a half an hour before I want to kind of get you know we get things underway to um to eat um but so what I've been doing is just um pulling out my spinning wheel and just sitting down and spinning and it really is um very helpful I really enjoy it I just enjoy spinning I enjoy looking at the colors I enjoy the the feel of the fiber through my hands. I really, really enjoy it. And this is uh, this lovely skein, uh, I mean, a lovely braid of, um, of uh, merino that I was gifted to by my friend Kathy. And it has these beautiful, lovely, uh, muted um, colors of the springtime. So blues and some browns and, and pinks and a little bit of uh, darker, uh, darker pink. 
and it's it's 100% merino and it's just beautiful so here you can see how it's coming out it's lovely I'm trying to spin this fairly thin because what I wanted to do with this is to practice um, Navajo plying so three plying um, I would like to make a um, uh, three ply yarn and I don't you know I don't know how much I'll have of it so I'll see what I have of it when I'm done I don't I probably won't have enough for socks um, but I may have enough um, to do another pair of mitts something along those lines maybe a hat maybe a cowl something but I'm really just really happy I'm super happy with this I just love it and when I do the three ply I think I had talked about this before because um, I had watched the craftsy not craftsy anymore I forget what it's called but someone had corrected me because craftsy blue something I forget, but I'll, I'll put the link down at the bottom, but I think Craftsy got bought out by someone. But if you have, if you have, um, if you own Craftsy videos, you still own them through the website that, that purchased them. So you can still go on and, and watch them and, or, and they do this, they're doing the same thing. So you can purchase other, um, other videos as well. But, um, I had watched a, a video on spinning with color in mind and what you can do with that. So I really would, would like to Navajo ply this three ply it so I can re, re, I can keep these color repeats so that the colors won't get muddied up. And that definitely could happen with these muted colors like this. It really and there's some brown in here. So what would could potentially happen if I was um, if I was spinning two separate bobbins and plying them together, you could definitely see some muddiness. Like you would kind of could potentially lose some of the colors and get it overwhelmed by uh, the, the brownish, um, the brown. I mean, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But for me, for these beautiful colors, I wanted to see if I could keep them and by Navajo plying or chain plying them. I'm not very good at it. I've done it a few times. So I need some practice and, um, you know, I'll get some, I'll get some beautiful yarn and colors out of this. So I'm really happy with this. So this is my, my spinning work in, prog uh, in, in progress. Um, and I'm almost done with this. So I'm ready to start thinking about some new spinning that I'm going to be that I'm going to be doing all right so I think those are all my works in progress so let's move on to the next section okay so now we're going to do my new segment um, called meet the designer and I've done this uh, two times I'm going to continue this uh, this year and really this is in response to the uh, all of dis the discussions that have gone on on um, over on Instagram uh, regarding inclusivity, uh, racism, white supremacy, just all of these conversations that just that just need to happen and have been happening over on Instagram, and um, my kind of response to that is is that I I have been. Uh, <clears throat> taking part and listening to um, to all of these conversations that have gone on and I have actually been excited because what has come out of these conversations really on Instagram and on Ravelry as well is that I have been introduced to so many new designers and um, indie dyers that I just didn't know were out there. It's very hard. There are just so many people that are designing patterns and that are dyeing yarn and that are just doing all these amazing things in the crafting community. And I think in general, you kind of get sucked in because there are just so many good ones that are, um, that are so popular. And there are just, there are lots and lots of people out there that are doing amazing things that maybe aren't on the top tier of the list of those who you know. So what I am um, doing each month is um, I am taking a look at all of these different sources of new designers to me and I'm going to highlight one each month and uh, I'm going to ask you if you'd like, um, I'm going to set up, I will set up a Ravelry group over in the Knitting by, uh, I mean a, a Ravelry um, thread in the Knitting by the Sea Ravelry group. So come on over and join the group and then take a look at this new designer's uh, patterns and tell me which one you would like to knit and why. And, uh, and then each time I will choose a winner and I will gift that, um, the winner, uh, the pattern of their choice from this new designer. And I'm really just hoping to kind of promote some new people, new faces, and, um, just kind of get some of these amazing, amazing, uh, patterns, uh, patterns out there. Um, last time we did this, we had, uh, our designer was Rose Beck. Um, and if you haven't, I'll put her link, I'll put a link to her designs at the bottom as well beautiful, beautiful designs. And, um, we had a winner. I did do it off screen. This is for you, Mary Beth. <laughs> One of our friends is, is just pretty funny about that. But I had, um, I had, uh, we had, um, 
numbers 2 to 28, so we had uh, 27 entries, and the winner was with random uh, random number uh, generator was number 2, who is Al McCall, so that is Linda. So Linda, uh, she chose the Cross Your Heart capelet uh, by Rose Beck. So Linda, I will, um, I'll message you, and you can look forward to having that beautiful design show up in your Ravel Ravelry mailbox. Um, today, the new designer that we're going to talk about is uh, Grace Ann Farrow. And I came by Grace Ann Farrell because, as re again, as a response to all the conversations that were going on on Instagram and on Ravelry, um, Ravelry put together what they called a solidarity swap. And so this solidarity swap was uh, two, had two different sections. You could either swap um, a physical package um, or you could swap a pattern. And so what I decided to do was to swap a pattern. And what they wanted you to do is to choose a pattern from a new designer. Um, and they had, they have, they, it's still there. They have several different bundles that are up there. So they're going to have, um, some, just some, um, really interesting designers that maybe you haven't heard of. Um, and so when I, you know, and basically you got introduced to your partner and you would go and look at, um, look at their wish list and, and, um, give them a design from one of these designers. And that's really what it was, was, um, was put together for. So when I went through and looked, I, um, looked and found, uh, Grace Ann Farrow and she had this unbelievably beautiful pattern called the assembler. And it is a beautiful lace um, shawl. I'll put pictures up here too. Um, just unbelievably gorgeous, um, lace shawl. Now, you know, I'm not a big lace knitting person. I'm um, not lace itself, but lace yarn weight, um, a lace weight, um, shawl, but this just, it just caught my eye. And so I said, this is, this is, that was one of the, the patterns that I chose and my partner gifted that pattern to me. So I actually have ordered some beautiful lace weight, I think it's coming from Webs, um, so that's not here yet, but it should be. So that will be one of my one, two, three, my uh, one, two, three, create patterns coming up over this over the summer. And I'm really looking forward to that. But because I gifted was gifted that pattern, I thought, why don't I um, highlight um, Grace Anna uh, here as well? So um, I'm just going to read a little bit to you about um, what she says. She has a website. And it is, uh, it's called a, a Stitch to Wear with Knitting Patterns. So she's also on, on Ravelry as well, so you can find her on Ravelry. But um, it says, Grace Ann Farrell learned how to knit on pickup sticks when she was in the third grade. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> That's amazing. In the many years that followed, she has grown into a knitter hailed by Vogue Knitting as the advocate, advanced knitter's best friend. While she is occasionally distracted by sewing and pattern drafting, She's always enthusiastic about the possibilities of knitting and loves to share her knowledge and passion for the craft with new and experienced knitters alike. So what I want you to do, as I said, is to go over to um, the Knitting by the Sea Ravelry group and take a look at, I'll have a link right in there, and you can take a look at all of her patterns and then tell me which one you would like to knit and why, and maybe you'll be the lucky winner next time. So good luck. my favorite things. So I was approached by um, Katrina from Katrina's Creations podcast. And she and some of her friends, her other podcasting friends were going to thinking about um, just putting together a list of their 10 favorite knitting patterns. And so she asked me to be part of it. And I said, absolutely, sure, I would love to love to do that. So uh, what I think I will do today is I will actually split this up in two. I'm going to talk about um, five patterns that I really, really enjoyed and why I enjoyed them. And then next time I'll do five more. So you'll have to look forward to um, or wait to see what my other five patterns are. Um, so I picked kind of a range of different patterns this time. The first one, I think for me, um, for many reasons is the, uh, Bruntsfield vest. And that is by Isolde Teague. And the reason why this is tops on my list, I don't know if I would ever knit it again, but it was, it just had all kinds of things that I was excited about. It was, it's a fair isle of vest a vest. So that's the first thing, a vest. I, I don't have a lot of vests. I really like them. I, I really like vests and I don't have a lot. Um, so I, I think yeah, more will be in my future. I, I would, I would assume. I'm, um, but, um, so it was a vest and it is a fair isle all over fair isle front and back as you can see. And, um, you have to steak it, you steak it in the front for the neck and you steak the two armholes as well. So for me, this was my first steaking project. First steaking project. 
And for some reason in my mind, I thought it would be easier to, rather than just sneaking up uh, and making a cardigan, it must be easier to sneak here and here and here. No, it's a little more difficult because <laughs> you really need to think about it because you're continuing the color work across and yet this piece is, I mean, so it's kind of tight together and then it, it's going to open up and you're already, you're having to do the decreases while it's still one solid piece. <laughs> plus you have the, plus you have the armholes. Yeah, it was, it, it was great. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a really super interesting project and I love that. Uh, and I, you know, I just forged forward with it. I really didn't know what I was getting into, but I did forge forward with it, and I really love it. I like it. I wear it a lot. Um, I'm always getting uh, compliments on it. It's unusual as well. You know, I think um, people don't wear, or women don't wear a lot of vests anymore. They certainly don't wear Fair Isle vests. I think Fair Isle vests, you know, they're more along the... Um, the uh, you know Prince of Wales kind of thing back in the 20s when they actually first were um, were really were um, were started and or became popular and um, so you just don't see them so I think it's very striking every time I wear it someone will stop me and say wow and then they'll stop me and go wait a minute did you make that <laughs> so it's you get a lot of bang for your buck out of that um, out of this particular pattern but I really enjoyed it. It was, um, the knitting part was not difficult. It's a, you know, for it, you, you know, you're doing Fair Isle, but you're only using, it's true Fair Isle, so you're only using two colors on each row. Um, and it just has a lot of technical things that you need to, to do or think about, um, pay attention to. So I really, I really enjoyed it. And it, that's really definitely my, I think my top, I'm probably most proud of, of completing, of completing that. And, and I just, I just really like it and I love wearing it. Um, my second pattern is a pair of socks. You know, I always love to knit socks. I knit socks because they're small, they're convenient, to, they're portable really, and I have time to do that um, on the bus. So I'm usually, usually knitting, um, knitting socks. Um, I, I do knit socks with patterns on them. I like simple patterns though. Um, I like, I like enough interest to kind of keep my head in them. I, I don't do just plain stockinette socks in the round unless I'm using um, the, the um, you know, the yarn that does the color changes um, itself or makes self patterning yarn, I should say. Um, I just, I would get, I just get really bored just knitting in the round. So I, I usually like to have some type of a pattern. And one of my favorite patterns is the Sanderson sisters. And um, I just really enjoy it. That's the, the those are socks by uh, Sarah Losey and my friend Sarah. And um, I really enjoy the pattern. It's simple, but uh, engaging enough. And I love the name. <laughs> I love where it came from. Um, you know, it's from, uh, it's referencing the Sanderson sisters from um, Hocus Pocus, the uh, the Halloween movie. And that Halloween movie was filmed right here in Marblehead. <laughs> so I walked by the, I walked by one of the, the Hocus Pocus house every single, every single day. Um, so, I mean, it just has all, all it just has all these great, um, you, you know, great uh, connotations for me. So I really enjoy it, but it's really one of my favorite, favorite patterns um, to knit when I knit socks. Um, the next one is the Stripe Study Shawl by Vera Velamaki. Now that pattern has been around for a long time. I have knit it at least three times, at least three times. The first one I gave away to my mother-in-law and then I knit two more for myself one of which moths got into, so that is no longer with us. But I have another one as well, and I really like it. Um, you know, she also, her other really popular pattern, of course, in shawls is the, the color affection. I did knit the color affection, but I wasn't as happy with that, and I think that's because it's a, it's a, um, it's a rounded shawl, and I just, I couldn't get I was always too tight on the top, so it's a crescent. It was a crescent, so I'm always on the top, and then it's rounded. Um, but I, my top of it was just always too tight, and that happened. That happens a lot. I don't knit a lot of those crescent shawls just because of that. I know that about myself. And then, um, you know, they look beautiful, but I'm never happy. You know, you get to that, you're like, I just want to wear it because I'm not happy with this. I should have should have done it differently and different and better. But the stripe study does not have any curves at all. It's it's um, a very asymmetrical um, V's, and it's really lovely. And if you use um, enough contrast in the in the yarn, it's beautiful. It's all garter stitch. 
a couple of so there's some short row shaping in it but really um it's a, a garter stitch shawl knit in fingering weight and it's beautiful i really enjoy it you know I, like i said i have made at least three of them i might have made four and i'm sure i will make it um i will make it again um so that's one two three my fourth one for today is the range shawl by andrea mowry um i did that one actually is still is downstairs um on our couch and what i liked about the range um it's knit in um dk or worsted if i remember correctly and it had, just has a, a lot of different textures to it and it also has brioche so it's the first time that i learned how to do brioche so that's really why i like um i like that pattern um really beautiful warm squishy wrap it's not all brioche it's just there's different sections to it but one of the sections is is a brioche section so I got to learn something new when I did that and I really um I enjoyed knitting it and I enjoy using it it's really usually on my you know as I said it's on the couch and just kind of so something to throw around my shoulders when I want to keep warm at, at night um the last one is for today is the hitchhiker by my Martina Bem now the hitchhiker has been around forever as well but I really like it. I probably have knit, I definitely have knit three or four of these as well. And I've got a couple at work. And the nice thing about the Hitchhiker is it's a super simple pattern to remember. It has, uh, because it has those teeth, it has a lot of interest in it when you're, you know, it's simple, but you have to think about it. So there's interest. It keeps your, you know, it keeps your mind engaged because if you don't pay attention, it, it, it just turns out really badly. But if you do and keep your mind engaged, it's it's just a really interesting pattern. It only takes one skein of yarn. So if you have one of those beautiful skeins of uh, <clears throat> of hand indie dyed yarn, you don't know what to do with. Um, the Hitchhiker is a great pattern to um, to go to. Um, you can knit. You know, it's designed to to have forty two teeth on the edge um, because um, that's why it's called the Hitchhiker. It it is referencing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you have never read that stop everything and go and read that right now because it is a fabulous, fabulous book. But um, you, if you read that book, you know that 42 is the answer to everything. So that's why there are 42 teeth on the edge of the hitchhiker, uh, hitchhiker shawl. But um, I really like it because it's beautiful. So if you knit it in this beautiful hand, um, you know, indie dyed yarn, um, the, um, I forget what the, the recommended needle size is, but it's perfect for, for fingering weight yarn and it just makes this beautiful squishy because it's all garter stitch it's just a beautiful squishy um texture and it is thin enough that it's easy to wrap around your neck a couple of times as an accent piece or if you just need a quick something around your your neck and it is just it's just a really it's a fun pattern i really enjoy it and there will be more hitchhikers in my future i am absolutely sure so uh, those are my fave five favorite uh, knitting patterns for this time and next time i'll give you five more so let's move on to the next section um new things i guess i could call this new new things so i have some things that i have acquired over the last few weeks um, purchased and gifted so I have a little bit of um, both but they're really all very wonderful uh, wonderful things the first thing that I'll show you I'm gonna reach down here <clears throat> is that I have my sock my the, the no I'm sorry the, the hat pattern that I'm working on I put in my brand new bag I was very lucky to have won a, um, a beautiful handmade project bag um, <clears throat> by Autumn who is Codding, uh, Coddington Autumn on Instagram and uh, I won this from Melinda from the Yarnder Woman podcast. Um, and I believe it was on her, um, the Melinda Shawl uh, knit along that, that, uh, that she had. I showed you um, a couple times back. And I was extremely delighted by, by this. And Autumn actually sent it directly to me. Ooh, it has uh, some fiber on it here, but that's okay. And this is the bag. Isn't this lovely? And it's so appropriate because I've lived by <laughs> knitting by the sea. <laughs> so this is super, super cute. It's got this pink bottom and the, the, the pattern on the top. And there's a lovely, lovely, just a really pretty white light pattern on the inside. It's super, it's, um, it feels quilted. It's really very nice and stable and it's got this beautiful pull on it. I really like it. So it really feels, really feels great, um, all together. So thank you very much, Melinda. Thank you, Autumn. I'm very, very happy with my new bag and I am using it right now. My, uh, let's see, the second thing that I got, I purchased, Katie, um, Katie Greenbean on, um, on Instagram and the Katie Greenbean, um, uh, podcast. And, um, 
she is a, well, she's a knitter, of course, but she's also um, uh, an illustrator. And uh, she does beautiful, beautiful drawings. She has done um, some, um, uh, uh, lots of different, she's done a, at least one um, book, but I think she's got some more in the works, but she's doing beautiful, beautiful work. And she is, in, um, yeah, she, I, I, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. And what this is that I purchased from her is the Green Bean E-Zine. So this is it here. It's bikini, I love it. So these are all pictures that are hand done by her and she's put them into made them into a little zine and this one has a theme of the little seashore and going into the um into the little coves and seeing all the different animals that are that live there and if you watch her podcast she uh does drawing on each of her podcasts so we've seen her do some of these drawings um online and i just love them she first um put these uh, out for sale she was a vendor at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and then she had them online after that on her on um, her Etsy shop, and so I was able to grab grab one, and it's just lovely. It actually has a um, it has a couple of patterns in it as well. It has a pattern for a really beautiful um, sewn um, pillow, and she uh, then has a pattern for these beautiful socks as well. So I'm really I'm really happy. I'm really happy to, to have this and it just always feels nice to um, to support um, an independent artist um, when we can. She also did a um, a poster of British sheep breeds and I also got that too but I brought that to work so I get to look at that on my wall every every day so I'm very 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 happy with um, happy with that. Now the other things that I have received as, as well um, over the last couple of weeks um, if you've noticed it, you probably haven't noticed it, but I have a beautiful shawl pin. And I actually have two. And here's the second one. This is the second one. But I, oh, let's put it there so you can see. Isn't that gorgeous? And these are both by the lovely Leslie Wind. And she gifted these to me um, after watching my last pod podcast episode um, with my Mayhem sweater. Um, because as I said, that, that sweater doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have a button or a closure or anything, but I said I could use a shawl pin and pop it closed if I want. And Leslie, um, messaged me and said she was going to gift these to me. And unbelievably, this is just so gorgeous. So I wore this actually to work last week <laughs> with my mayhem cardigan and yeah, people were very, very jealous of me. <laughs> having this but it's just just beautiful Leslie does beautiful work we've actually um we've uh had a giveaway of um of some of her her um her work on the podcast in, in the past but just lovely and she's local to me too so she lives up in Rockport which is just you know probably about a maybe half hour 40 minutes north of north of Marblehead so that's even special too so we I usually see her at different um different events that we go to but again thank you Leslie it's lovely and it's just it's absolutely perfect perfect um for for me to wear with that sweater and then with anything else that I might I might like to um to wear it with um so what else oh so my last piece is here and I'll talk more about this in the chatter section but um, so I went to the, the knit local this weekend. And so we, we have a couple of things. Um, the first thing, of course, that we went to, um, we ended up going to, um, uh, foster sheep farm. So Carol Foster's uh, farm, we got to look at some sheep and stuff. But of course, when I'm there, I need to purchase something. Of course I have to. And what I go for when I go to Carol's is her, um, fiber. And <laughs> she, I usually... I just, I just love her fiber. She has these beautiful, beautiful Coriadale sheep and unbelievable. So this time she had some big bag where she had, she had this available to us and this is beautiful Coriadale, but look at this color. It is a lovely deep rose color and it is gorgeous. And I got, it's going to crinkle a little bit, but I got eight ounces of it. So I quite a bit of spinning to do in my future, but it's just gorgeous. I love it. I just love the texture of it. Um, it's like, it's already like pre-drafted. It's just, it's perfect. And I, I don't have any plans for what I'm going to make with it, but I'm sure some, whatever I make will be, will be gorgeous. I'm really looking forward, looking forward to it. Um, and then I have a couple of other things, yarny things. When we do the, when we go to the knit local, one of the things that we do is people bring along, um, yarn that maybe they purchased and they don't know what to do with. Uh, so basically we have a swap table 
and so we put everything out there and then you know you put your stuff down and take what you want and it's great because it's just it's usually packed full and so this time around I chose two different ones the first one is called um, uh, it's from lucid dream sock yarn and it's the prism colorway Juliana's fiber.com so here's the here's the that's backwards but and this is the beautiful skein of yarn. Yay. Really. I think that'll be really cool. So this probably will become a pair of socks, I anticipate. So that was one lovely skein of yarn. And then the second skein of yarn that I snagged off of that table is uh, Yoshi and Lucy. I've never knit with Yoshi and Lucy either. And this is, um, it's their Isabel base, uh, 7525 Merino Nylon fingering. And um, it is called City Sidewalks. So I think that's really nice too. This would be a beautiful, a beautiful pair of socks as well. So I think I have my sock, my sock knitting yarn all set to go as I continue on my three, two, one, create process through the year. And then the last piece is really the most is the most exciting. We also do um, we also do a, a spirit um, a spirit gift box bag basket. Um, so, um, and we, um, everybody usually will bring something. So this is something new that you want, like, you know, it could be anything, anything. There's just multiple things that people, people, um, bring, um, yarn, fiber, books. It's just, it's really across the gamut of the different things that, that people, that people bring to put in the spirit basket. And we use, and we each buy, um, we buy, uh, tickets and we, and then there's the drawing. And so, um, we are able to, you know, we, somebody wins what's in the, the spirit, um, the spirit basket, um, each, each year. And it's really just exciting. And it's for a good cause. We, um, donate Sarah, um, pomegranate who runs the knit local sheet. We donate all of the, the money to a, um, to a local fiber, um, a local group that's doing work with, um, um, the young folks and, and fiber. So that's always, it's going to a really great cause and it's a lot of fun for, it's a lot of fun for us because they're usually about 20, 20, 25 of us all together. And um, Mary Beth, I mentioned Mary Beth earlier when I did the, the drawing for um, for the pattern. Our friend Mary Beth runs the spirit, <laughs> the spirit basket giveaway. And this is our big, this was our biggest ever this year. And so what we ended up, she ended up doing is kind of splitting them, um, splitting all of the things up and kind of made a theme of, of some things. Um, so there was a, you know, a self-care theme. And I think that one, um, someone had brought in some you know, some lush bath bombs and some candles and uh, um, a book of poetry. And so she kind of put that together. And so there was a ton on that table and there was enough for everybody here at the, at the retreat to get something, which was really super, super fun this year. Um, so we all bought our tickets. And so she did random number, or a random number generator. It was just, it was really, it was just a lot of fun um, to, to do that. But so I, my number came up fairly early and I, I knew what I wanted to get. I had my eye on this already. There was a sweater's worth, sweater, a sweater's worth of Primrose Yarn Co. Mm -hmm. And in this beautiful color that is my favorite color ever. I know green. I know. I know it's the green again, but unbelievable. And it turns out that, um, Jacqueline Salem of, um, uh, the Brooklyn um, Knit Folk podcast had donated this. So it was really, it was a lot of fun. So literally there's a sweater's worth of this yarn. And I, I grabbed, I grabbed that when it was my turn and I got up there and then she came to me later and she gave me two more, um, two more skeins of it because she actually had started knitting with this and um, on a sweater and she just decided that the color wasn't her, for her. And so she, she gave me, so I actually can rip out the piece of the sweater that she, that she gave me. So that was really fun and generous and it was just lovely. But this is going to be a, um, so this gorgeous yarn is going to become a Raw Work Trees by Katrin Schneider. And this is the, um, this is the sweater that um, we're going to knit as our Rhinebeck sweater. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that would be myself, my sister-in-law Tracy, um, uh, Andrea Adirondack Knitter, um, Lori um, uh, from Chickawood Studio, and probably her daughter Corinne, and Patricia from Knitography. We're all going to knit this sweater to wear to Rhinebeck, and I'm really excited. Um, I'm excited about this. This is a perfect yarn for it. I love it. Yep, and I got plenty. Um, so this probably will be the next sweater that I 
cast on when I'm done with my arboreal. I'm really happy um, about this. Um, so yeah, it was a fantastic, fantastic weekend for getting some beautiful yarn and some fiber. Okay, so what has been happening here? Um, quite a bit, actually. Oh, my, that fiber is getting right in my nose. <laughs> Right in my nose, real life here. Oh boy. Um, so uh, it's spring. Doesn't really feel like it yet. It hasn't been really super hot yet. It's been really rainy and wet. And I mean, the flowers are loving it. The trees are starting to pop up, and all the daffodils and the tulips are up. But I think for most of us, it's just oh, I just want it to be warm and dry, warm and dry. Um, it'll get there. You know, this happens, this happens to us every year, but I've been lucky enough to be traveling a little bit. So I have traveled to Phoenix, Arizona and to New Orleans <laughs> over the last three weeks. And that was been a little crazy all for work. I had two conferences back, uh, back to back. I would not recommend that to anyone, but that's what we had. And so that's what we did. Um, the first one was just three days and that was in Phoenix. I've never been to Phoenix before, so I, I've never experienced that kind of hot and dry weather. Oh, that was nice. That, it was beautiful to just be able to sit out, uh, sit outside and feel the warmth of the sun, but not be overwhelmed by the humidity, which was in the wet, which was really, it was very different air than we have here. Very different air than in Florida, which is what I am um, accustomed to. Um, so that was a delightful, <clears throat> a delightful change. And it was really nice. I can definitely see why people retire out there, but we had a great time with actually with that conference. We had some really fun food. We um, hiked up a big, um, not a mountain, but a big hill that was behind the, the hotels. And that was, that was really, <laughs> that was a lot of, a lot of fun too. And then we came home for two days and then flew out to New Orleans for my second conference. And that one Mark came along on. So we basically took that as a, um, a, a week vacation. It was really, you know, it's a two day vacation really for me, but um, so, um, yeah, so that was, that was really fun too. And New Orleans, again, I'd never been to New Orleans either. So that was really a lot of fun. Um, uh, my, uh, the person that I work with, um, she had, she, her brother went to Tulane. So she's had a lot of experience, um, walking around New Orleans. And so we were staying down in the warehouse district. And, um, that first night that we were there, um, we took a long walk all around. Um, we went out and had dinner and we walked into the French Quarter. So I really got a good sense of where I was. So by the next night when, um, Mark decided to come out, it was, it was great. Cause we actually knew where to, I knew where to go, which it, which was really, which was really good. Sometimes I don't in places, sometimes I get turned around, but in this particular instance, it worked really well. I knew exactly where we were. I knew where, where, where we were going. We just walked everywhere. I probably walked, I don't know. I walked a ton of, a uh, ton of steps, um, there, um, that heat's a little different. It is, that's humid, a little more humid. Um, but again, it's just, it's early enough in the season where it wasn't like overwhelming. I think it was in the maybe high seventies, eighties, most days, but certainly more humid than, than Phoenix, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad at, um, at all. Um, and, um, yeah, we did lots of, lots of fun things. We went on a, um, we went on a paddle boat um, tour, um, up the Mississippi river and stopped off at a battlefield which was really fun for fun for mark but it was really nice to just get out on the water that was a really fun thing to um fun thing to do we also went to the world uh national world war ii museum i had no idea that, that was in new orleans but it, it was and that was it was amazing if you have a chance to go there it's just it's fantastic um i think we probably spent the morning there but you could spend all day there if you if you wanted to and they have a lot of um interactive um, exhibits and just, it, it's really, if you're interested in it, of course, you know, Mark was like, this, this was his thing. So that was super interesting to, to, um, to go to. Um, as I said, we had, we drank a lot of, we didn't drink any hurricane. That, that was the big thing when I got back, people like, Hey, did you have a hurricane there? I was like, no, I did not have a hurricane. I had margaritas. <laughs> did not have a hurricane, but we had some nice margaritas <laughs> and we had some fun food and, uh, yeah, it was just a nice, it was just a nice, a nice getaway. And, you know, of course, here we are back again, back to work, back to work, but that's, that's okay too. Um, last weekend, uh, Sophia and I went to the Knit Local Getaway. So we do this each year. Um, this was the, the, 
it's for the Washington County, it's at the time of the Washington County Fiber Tour. So Washington County um, for two days at the end of April, each April they have several farms that open up to the public. You usually can't go to farms, you can't just walk into a farm, but they open up the farms. Um, it's lambing season, so it's a fun time to go and see all the new little lambs. And, you know, you can purchase yarn, you can talk to the farmers and the shepherds and just talk about what's happening. And just, it, it you know, the scenery is beautiful no matter what the weather. And it's just, it's fun. Um, Tracy and I went um, quite a bit before we did this local, just because we lived there. So we had gone to the, we had gone to the, um, to the fiber tour before just on a Saturday, on a Saturday and just driven around and gone to all the different, different farms. And, um, well, one year, several years, I think maybe five years ago now, um, Sarah, uh, came up and, um, stayed, uh, at the retreat house, um, Christ the King retreat house, uh, with, uh, our friend Fernanda. They actually had never met. They were pen pals and they ended up getting together and deciding to come up for this. And they met the first time during that weekend and uh, Tracy and I actually met them for dinner. We got together for dinner with them. And because of her uh, Sarah's experience, she's like, she thought she would see if she wanted to kind of put together something for other people to come and enjoy it as well. And so she has, and it has been very successful. And we just love to go each year. I got Sophia to come. Sophia has her, a couple of her friends and my friends, of course, um, uh, come down from Vermont. And it's just a really lovely, lovely group of people. It's always a little bit different. It feels different every single time. There are uh, many people that are there all the time and come each year. But, you know, there's some, you know, sometimes life happens and you just can't make it. So we are able to pull in some new people. Um, our friend Andrea and Ronnie Knitter came this year. And again, she lives in Saratoga, too. So she was kind of like hesitant about having, you know, staying over. But I think she was really glad she she did. It, it's just a it's again, it's it's a great experience. If you you know, I've said this before, but if you ever have the chance to do so, to go to, a, you know, Rhinebeck is great. Maryland Sheep and Wool is great. Edinburgh Yarn Festival is great. They're huge. They're big. Um, they're kind of um not not warehouse, but they're they're just big. It's overwhelming. There's so many things. Where this is a really tiny, small retreat, and so really we come in on a Friday afternoon. We bring all of our food with us, so we have um, soups and all kinds of crock pots going. We have breads and fruit and desserts and all kinds of crazy stuff. And so we all just come. We relax. We sit and we knit and we eat <laughs> and we drink and we just have a great you know a wonderful conversation um in the evening and just have there's so so much laughter so much fun that um that happens there and some really some really really good deep conversations i think go on among among people um and you know then on saturday we just all get up and we go head out to the farms and take our tour around and then come back and gather at the end and we get a little show and tell and see what we all uh, we all got um, you know, do some dinner. We either have leftovers. This year we had, we ordered in pizza. We had some pizza, um, kind of thing. Uh, sometimes we do Chinese, something, whatever, you know, whatever people want to do for, um, for dinner. And then we, again, we just sit and knit and laugh and it, just enjoy ourselves and just, and, and share, um, you know, share our passion and commitment to the, um, to the fiber arts. And it's just a fabulous, fabulous experience. So if you have ever have an, a chance to go to something like that, please do, please take it. Um, even if you go by yourself, you know, we've had lots of times we have people that have come in new and I, I just love it. I love meeting new people, talking to them and we, we embrace, uh, you know, we just embrace everyone who, um, who comes to it. It's just a really, it's a fabulous experience. I feel very lucky to be able to, to do that, to live in an area where I can, I can do that, but if you ever do have a chance, um, please consider it. It is just a, a, a fantastic type of um, type of experience. Um, and then, other than that, it's just back to work. Um, and as I said, hopefully the weather's going to change a little bit. My um, next vacation time will be in July, so we have the Fourth of July off, holiday off, and then I'm going to take the week after the Fourth of July off. So that will be exciting. We have the big Marblehead to Halifax race is here this year. So I'm going to be doing some volunteering with that. So you might hear more about that as we get closer to it um, with the with the Yacht Club. Um, that's a huge, a really big a race that goes from um, here, Marblehead, to Halifax, Nova Scotia, obviously. And um, they have these really, um, really big sailboats that um, that do that. But it's only every other year. So this is a Halifax year. So it's really um, big and crazy. And it all happens right around the 4th of July. So this just going to be lots of noise and confusion and and craziness uh, going on here and um you know at the 
at the club. The, the club is st starting to open up a little bit more. We'll have an opening day kind of thing in middle and two more weeks, I think. Two more weeks of, of that. So, and that'll, that'll be nice. So then we'll be able to, to do some eating. I'm planning, I didn't last year, but I'm planning this year. I'm doing a lot of knitting on the, uh, on the porch of the, at the club this year because I get to look out over the water and you know you can just they have, lots, they have like lots of rocking chairs and it's just it's a really nice nice thing to do so I really want to do that um I want to try to do that on Saturdays maybe even Sunday mornings and just go over there and get on a get my space on a chair and, and get um get get uh get knitting so I'm really I'm actually looking I'm really looking forward um looking forward to that uh Sophia's going up to visit her friends in Vermont for uh, for a week um, at the end of May, so that will be really nice for uh, for her. Um, I'm trying to get Mark to get out and take some more pictures, um, and uh, he's been trying to get back to. He plays the guitar. He doesn't play the guitar. He would like to play the guitar. He has a guitar, so he. But he does. You know, he he um, uh, practices a lot to YouTube videos. So he's been. We've been. I've been encouraging because it kind of got put on the wayside there um, when we when we move. So he's trying to get that, you know, kind of get back to get back to that. But now that the weather is nicer too, we can get outside more. Um, so he's going to uh, get him back to taking some more, uh, some, some more pictures of, uh, of the area as well. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put in, uh, so I'll have some video and some lots of fun pictures from our retreat. <laughs> lots of sheepy pictures. There were so many cute little, cute little sheep. Oh my gosh. They're just adorable when they're first, when they're first born. Um, Yep, so I'll have lots of pictures of the of the retreat, and um, yeah, so I think that's it for now. So don't forget to go and enter the uh, the giveaway for the for the pattern, and um, remember, it's just knitting. Bye.